Take your hog casings and put them in a bowl of water and try to find the ends. Now you will separate the casings one by one. Like that. Take your thumbs and try to work the end open on each casing until the water opens it up. And as you can see, it's filling up the casing with water. That way, we can swish it back and forth to rinse it out. And you do this over and over again with each casing until you feel that it's clean. Seesaw the casings back and forth with the water inside. This is how you clean the casings. The clean casings are then put in a bowl. I like to work with about four at a time because I can always come back and clean more. And I lay the ends over the lip of the bowl so they're easy to grab. If you want to do a large quantity at a time, some folks use a bucket and they lay the ends over the side of a bucket in a circle. You can mix your seasonings from scratch or you can buy the pre-made seasoning packets. That's up to you. Either way, make sure it's mixed in really well. Add water to the seasoning and stir until seasoning has dissolved. Mix together venison and pork, mixing very well. You can use your hands or you can use a meat mixer. You will now mix in your seasonings to the meat. We will now load the casing onto the horn. It's best to wet the horn down with some water to make it slick. Now you're going to take the casing and try to find the end of it, like that. And you're going to work it on the horn. Make sure you leave a little bit off because we're going to have to tie that end off with some butcher's twine. We will now begin the process of filling the casings with the meat mixture. Just to note, Inside here I have a fine plate. It helps cut it even smaller and actually makes it kind of mushy, which is what you want. Guide the casing off. Do not overstuff because you are going to have to make links by twisting this and this will burst if you overstuff it. Spiral the sausage on the table just to make it more manageable as it comes off. Make sure you stop while you still have a little left on the end because you're going to have to tie that off. Here's how you make the links. Decide how long you want it and pinch and twist. Give it a couple twists like that and then move on to the next one. The next one will be twisted the opposite direction so you won't untwist this. Just like that. So on and so forth. In a pre-warmed smoker, hang the meat 
using the S hooks that you've created from wire. Make sure the meat is not touching each other because you want the smoke to go all the way around and all the way through each link. It's best to use a digital meat thermometer and to place it inside one of the links so you can monitor the internal temperature. We will now shut the door to the smoker and have the smoker at about 120, 130 degrees and we will let the meat dry out for about 30 minutes. After your 30 minutes of drying, we will add soaked hickory chunks to the firebox. We will pour heavy smoke at that time for about an hour and a half. I've taken the soaked wood chunks, added to the firebox, and I've closed the damper on top of the smoker. We will now let it smoke for an hour and a half. Add hot coals or more soaked hickory chunks as needed to keep it smoking and to keep it hot. We're going to keep the temperature at about 140 degrees for this period of time. It's been an hour and a half of heavy smoke. Continue to cook until the internal temperature of the meat reaches 155 degrees. The internal temperature of the meat is 155 degrees. We are now going to open the door and check the meat. The meat looks like it has a good color. It's golden brown, well smoked. We will now shower it with water to cool it off slowly. Once the meat is cooled, you can remove it from the smoker. It'll then be ready to eat or ready to store in the freezer.